Okay, let's start recording. <laughs> okay. Um, yes, I just want to follow up what you just told me that why on earth did I choose you <laughs> to talk about Roland Garros, right? I'm, that's that's a question I have for you, basically. Exactly. I was gonna reverse it. I was like, I saw I saw Gustavo Quertin, Marat Safin, you know, the Brian brothers. Everybody that's sort of done really well or won the tournament multiple times. Um, I'm still yet to see uh, what Rafa has to say if you do catch him. But, um, you know, uh, it's, maybe you want to know the, the other stories, you know, what it's like to never really play or very seldom play your best at such an important, such a beautiful venue, such an amazing city. You know, there's so many other, there's too many distractions for me in Paris, I think it is. Um, so, you know, <laughs> I'm so sorry, but you brought it up. So, Tommy, what is it like to not leave the Roland Garo trophy? <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. It, it's, uh, <laughs> I, I actually, uh, that was one trophy I, I always thought of maybe not holding up anyway. <laughs> you know I mean? <laughs> okay, well, but there I, you go. When, that I, when, I, when I sort of, when I sort of look at the history and, uh, you know, my idols growing up in some ways, obviously, here we go back again, uh, watching Boris, you know, uh, you know, idolizing his game, uh, his, his sort of will on the court. Um, he, he, I mean, he did well in Roland Garros, don't get me wrong. I mean, reaching the semifinals. You know, it's also obviously an achievement. You know, I think we often forget about the fact that uh, you know, even a lot of the players that play all these great uh, tournaments around the world and then play the big ones, including uh, you know Roland Garros. You know, even if you win a few matches, you know, every year or one round or two rounds. I mean, you can obviously look at it as you know, I didn't do as well as I was hoping to, but it's still somewhat uh, a success story. Um, but when you kind of you know have that vision and you know when you're dreaming when you're younger, you obviously you want to hold up. The, the Musketeer trophy on, uh, on the men's side, of course. And uh, um, I never really even got close to that. But at the end of the day, you know, you, you, you try your best to, to play your best certain times. You know, you, you, you get, it takes too long. You get too late in your career where you realize, God, you got to take advantage of it every year because time sure flies and you only maybe get uh, a certain amount of chances to, to do well there. Um, but uh, certainly one of, uh, one of the best tournaments uh, throughout the year, for sure. Now, my question is, why, Tommy? Why did we think this way? We both grew up on clay, so surely our attitude was not the best going into Paris. And didn't you realize towards the end that I think I could have played well on this surface, but our mental attitude was so bad just going into the clay court season, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, that is very true. And um, I think that, again, has to do then a little bit with your upbringing, um, you know, your surrounded team. Um, you know, in Germany, we do play on clay. I will have the argument that um, our clay courts in Germany are much different to the ones, especially in, in Roland Garros and certainly also in Spain. Ours is very thick, heavy clay. Anyone that knows uh, growing up in northern Germany, even in the summertime or, or, or springtime when you can play outdoors, it rains a lot. So that means you go back indoors on a fast carpet surface. So. I probably played at least like, you know, six and a half, seven months indoors uh, on, on, on carpet. So I always preferred playing indoors anyway, because you had zero distractions there. There was no sun, there was no wind, there was no rain. It was just you and your opponent in the ball and, and that's it. Um, and that's uh, some, somewhat how, how I like it. Then I moved obviously at a young age like you did to, uh, to Florida to train there. And, you know, basically it was all about the, uh, the hard courts. But as you said, and as you mentioned, I will say, if I can choose to what court I would like to rather play on now, I probably would choose, you know, uh, the clay uh, and the grass over the hard court if I had the choice, just because of the body. I mean, you know, when you get older and the movement, um, you feel your bones I more. I don't. Yeah, I mean, it, it's still obviously very nice to play on hard court as well, don't get me wrong, because you never have a bad bounce. But, man, I, I do love that, uh, that Roland Garros clay. I mean, you know, it is like a, it basically is like a, a hard court in some ways with that red uh, brick clay on it. And uh, when, the, when the weather is nice, I mean, it just feels great and you can slide a little bit. It's a lot of fun. Um, I think you are a little bit harsh on yourself, though, because we all remember the match against Roger, obviously the year when he won and you were a couple of points away from, from beating him and, you know. Yeah, um, that's actually, yeah, that's one of those matches. Um, you know, I've actually played a good, uh, good French Open that year. I remember the round before, I think I beat Jeremy Chardy, you know, French player on that uh, court one, the Bull Arena, Bull Ring Arena. 
which was great. Um, and I played really, really well there because I felt like, you know, Shardy played an extremely good match with a big serve in his forehand. So getting through that match, I was pretty confident, um, feeling pretty fit. And uh, going against Roger, you know, um, I didn't really have much to lose. So I kind of went in there, obviously, as the underdog. And Rafa was out. So I think Roger could, uh, could feel the tension uh, going into that match. And uh, Roger, I remember, didn't really have one of his... Uh, his best matches. He was struggling early on with his foreign to get the timing. And I played uh, extremely well. I kind of, you know, changed it up with my game, you know, playing defense, turning it into offense. I served well and was able to hold my serve quite good. And uh, I, must, I must confess, I think after winning the second set, I actually did tell myself, wow, I really have a chance of, uh, of winning this match here and, and maybe getting uh, to my first quarterfinal um, at, the, at the French Open and maybe further. So, um, I really thought I had a chance, um, and uh, I kind of looked at that break point at 3-4 in the third set when Roger was serving at 30-40. I looked at that as a match point because he hasn't broken me up until that point, I believe, and I was serving well. And uh, I remember hitting a really good back in return, and uh, I could see he's, you know, kind of running around that inside-out forehand. He's preparing for it, and he hits it just inside the line and uh, for a clean winner, and, you know, he kind of does his fist thing, and that was uh, a very crucial point, a very crucial game. Now, the next game at 4-all was actually very tight as well with game points, break points, saving, going over deuce. And then he breaks me, and it's almost like in that, in that uh, you know, Rocky IV movie when uh, Rocky is fighting Drago. It's almost like I started to bleed after that game. And he cut me and, uh, and you know, got the momentum and I never looked back. Tommy, what is your recipe? You've uh, retired quite a while ago, but the way you are still playing, uh, you could be easily on the, on the tour. How do you do it? How do I do it? Uh, it's funny. Uh, we were just talking about it the other day. I mean, I, I really don't do it. I mean, I enjoy playing tennis. You know, it's, it, it's something that I've been doing since, you know, the age of three, obviously. So I, I always look at it as, you know, maybe there's, there's going to come a day one day where I won't be able to play for whatever reason. Uh, I think we all know as athletes and if we stick to the tennis group of people, we all know that, you know, you have to take care of your body as good as you can. Um, you know, there's definitely been enough signs throughout my career that my body is a bit fragile, um, having uh, multiple, multiple surgeries. So even now, sometimes, you know, you just go to sleep and you wake up and your lower back is stiff or your upper neck is a little bit tight. Uh, so, you know, you're constantly trying to, to do something. If it's a little bit of stretching, a little bit of yoga. I mean, my go-to is always I just love to play tennis. You know, for some reason, the pain goes away. I don't think about anything else except trying to have fun, having a good time on the court. If it's with friends or, or former colleagues or still playing on the, on the seniors tour, you know, it's one thing I was actually going to say about, you know, French Open last year. It's also crazy how I felt like, you know, I played the juniors there in 1993 and last year in 2019, I'm playing in the seniors, right? It's like, what a, what a you know, different generation and, and still being able to do that, you know, I'm very grateful for that. And I'd like to play on those, uh, like to play those events as, as long as I can, as long as they want me and as long as I'm fit and still giving a show to the people playing good enough tennis. Let's talk about your background because is it A, you just wanted to make us all jealous where you are at the moment? B, you just wanted to show up? C, personally you wanted to make me pissed? Like what's going on? Because that is literally like a postcard background. So talk Yeah, no, it's, uh, it's, it's, um, it's lovely uh, Indian Wells. I'm in the desert. Uh, Pure coincidence. You haven't been here, you know, obviously because of the lockdown uh, due to the coronavirus for quite some time, you know, staying at home. But, you know, with two little kids, I felt like it would be a good time to change it up and, uh, and come out here this week. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's always great to be here, as you know. Um, also checking in with the entire team, seeing what's going on, see how everybody's doing, making sure everybody is, uh, is, is safe and healthy foremost and, uh, and just kind of, you know, following like everyone else waiting to see when, uh, when the tour on the ATP WTA is going to be able to come back, hopefully, hopefully sooner than later. Well, one thing is for sure that uh, out of all the players, you are probably one of the top ones that has been putting all the hard work in on the court, off the court, obviously, taking care of your family and doing such a great job. So, Tommy, I'll let you go. Enjoy the golf, hiking, everything you can over there in desert. Very jealous of that. And, uh, yeah. yeah, hope to see you somewhere on the tour at some point very soon. Same here. Sounds good. Thanks, Danny. Take care and uh, we'll talk soon. Yeah, thanks for joining us.